had this mindset of God, if I fail, because I had options. My mom was saying, go into DSS. Okay, you've left this job. I have connection for you to go into DSS. I refused. But what if I fail? I had that, I had that mindset that, guy, if I fail, I go d I wish you hadn't God. said that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what you see now? Because, because this I'm not one? going to edit this out too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so good morning, everybody across the world. Good morning, Lagos, Nigeria. Good morning, Nigeria, Africa. Good morning, Africa, the world. And good morning, the rest of the universe. Whatever um, intelligent life forms I'm watching this. So my name is Adi Folami Agumbiadi. Today is the Dark Boy Show, and we will be discussing the good, the bad, and the ugly of following your passion. Okay? The Dark Boy Show is focused on helping young people start new things, start new businesses, start new enterprises, and start new careers and figure out the way the world works. Navigate the complexity that's around the way the world works. My name is Adip Falami Agumi, I'm in public health position, and I am your host. And alongside with the industrious businessmen and entrepreneurs of an emerging rising Nigeria, we're joining you live from Lagos, Nigeria. So by way of quick introductions. I am Stephen Imadi, an entrepreneur. I basically run um, coding and robotics in schools, and um, I'm the CEO of um, iMateTech. You can find me on IG, Stephen Imade, the company's IG, Imade Tech, or Halo Academy. I am Lawa Labiodo. I'm an hairstylist. Okay. I'm Olatu Yola Rewaju. I'm a credit analyst with AB Microfinance Bank. You can find me on Instagram with Larry CEO, on Facebook. Okay, I'm Daisy, a travel consultant. My Twitter handle is Daisy underscore catching. Okay, so today we'll be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of following your passion. If unless you've not been unless you've not been living in a country where motivational speakers have gotten to. If you haven't, but if you have, if you've read motivational books, at some point in time, you would have heard someone tell you this that. You should follow your passion, follow your dreams, and everything will work out fine for you. Okay? Um, you will hear statements like, a job is a bribe that your employer is giving you to forget about your dreams. You will hear statements that only he who tries wins. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You hear all manner of statements like that. But the truth of the matter is entrepreneurship is hard, it's difficult, and it's extremely rewarding for those who make it to the end. And so in today's conversation, we'll be talking about following your dreams, following your passion. And we're talking, about, we're, we're talking about it across all the possible things that people intend to do, from following their passion into football, from following their passion into music, into the arts, into creative development, into software development, and to other forms of career decisions that people are making. Okay, to kickstart today's video, we will be responding to an article that found its way to Nairland a couple of days ago. And in this particular article, we had an individual who quit his job as a bank teller to pursue his passion of making money. And we will we'll analyze that conversation from our experiences to give the best sound counsel to anybody who is thinking of making a similar career move. So let's go to the article. My banker friend quit his job to work in a car wash. Seriously, I'm pained right now. How can one decide to be stupid and senseless at the same time? Before I begin, I swear to God who made me. This is not a lie. This is the true story. The story may seem long. So I have a friend, a close friend that works in a bank in Lag. He lives in his family's house because his parents are late and he earns 70k plus. Though he completes every now and then that the salary isn't much. If he collects salary by month, and before the tenth of the following months, he's already calling me for help on transport and all that. And once in a while, I'll help him with one or two K to take transport and all that. Last weekend, he was discussing with me on WhatsApp about car washing business, telling me it's lucrative and all those. I didn't pay much attention to it until he called me on Thursday and started crying. I asked him the problem. He told me a cousin of his, so he talked him into car washing business that is lucrative. And he can earn as much as 5k a day washing cars and he dropped the bombshell. 
He told me he sent in his resignation letter on Monday and packed out of his family house, telling those ones that he had been transferred to another branch. He moved to a one-room apartment. The car washing company provided to him and three other guys and started working. He said he hoped in his mind that if he could make 5k a day, he can save as, as much as 3 to 4k daily, and that is a big improvement to the bank work. The reason of, for this lamentation now was things are not the way his cousin told him. He said since last week Monday up till this moment, they have only washed maximum car of maximum of three cars per day. And at the end of the day, the car owners only give them five H each, in which he used for eating. I requested for a video call on Sunday and he's seriously looking lean and unkept. He, he apologized that he didn't seek an advice from me or anyone before taking that bold move. He told me he's seriously depressed and wants me to prefer a solution for him. Problem now is, he told me he's ready to quit the job and come to a different state that I am in in order to strategize. I don't know what to tell him because I don't have much to and I am currently I am struggling too because I'm sure if he comes, I'll fully be responsible for feeding and all that. More so, I can't tell him no. Because right now he has nowhere to go. His parents are late and he has already packed, up, packed out of the family house, rendering him homeless. More so, he's a very good friend. So I seek an advice from you all. Please advise me. I'm confused. Okay, so, that, so that's the dilemma. The person who is, who is asking for advice is not the person who quit his job. The person who is asking for advice is the friend of the person who quit the job. That the person who quit his job wants to come and live with you. And the friend is afraid that if this guy comes to live with me, double he's going to bring his bukata along. Yeah, so we'll give that guy advice quickly. And the advice is that you should not accommodate the person. Because if you accommodate the person, it's just eventually going to end in tears. Okay, so he needs to find a solution to his problem. And that's what we are here to discuss. All right? So this is the, this is the bad or the ugly side of following your passion. This is not a passion. This is not a passion. Just change the job. Yeah, yeah. It's not a passion. Where? Okay, so let's ask this question. Let's let's ask this question. This he's not following his passion. He wants to make money. Yes. And this is people. But he didn't think about it. But this is not. He didn't think about it. There's no passion in this thing. I mean, let's be realistic. Yes. How many people? That we know that washes cars are actually, you know, yeah, successful in their car. For yes. Yourself. No, let's be realistic. How many car washers do we know okay. that actually live maybe in a maybe one bedroom flat? Let's say. So, let's be realistic. Um, sorry, can I you understand? Um, I think the guy was. I will not say he's greedy, but if he actually yeah. put it yeah. right, if he actually yeah. put it right, he might actually make it to that car wash. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me tell you why right, so, so now so you see now we have someone who is in support of the guy so this is this will be interesting yeah. okay. After, okay, let so, me just speak this topic yes. you, we'll, we'll hear your thoughts yes. and then we'll hear from you sir because you work in banking okay and so we want to particularly we want you to, we want to add, we want you to address the root cause of of the reason why he made this career move okay so we'll hear from you and then we'll hear from him okay so okay so I feel um in putting the job at first um, is the wrong approach to it, but there is a better way you can actually do it. So um, when you're actually going to um, a business, I think um, what, what he was thinking about is not just him just washing cars, then maybe he's going to advance in it. So for instance here, yeah, he could actually first get more information about what he's trying to dabble into. As long as you get that information, learn about the trade, learn about everything, what he needs to know, what he needs to do, how to bring in customers and all of that. Then from the funds he gets while working and learning, he can be able to see, yes, I want to start my own business too. So that is how he could have probably gone around with it. And of course, the money he had made from the bank, if he was able to save some stipend and the one he saves while washing too, he can be able to accumulate then lease a space create his own thing and start. From one, you can bet more if he's passionate about it. That is just my own. Okay, so let's, 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 we'll take your questions. Let's, so from the point of view, you, you've worked in banking. I'm sure what, I'm sure the decision that faced this young man is not, several people would have, you would have seen people who have made similar decisions. Okay. And it's people who it worked out for and people who it did not work out for. So take us into the mind of this person. Um, 
the decision this guy took, I've done it in the past. Okay. Um, I really felt for the guy because I've been in his shoe before. Our government in this country, most especially our former president, Mr. Lucia Gomba Sanjo, who brought in a um, contract job into the banking system or the country in general, really didn't help the youth. If you're working in a bank as a contract job, it's more or less like you're in a slip trade. Yes. And that guy is a contract staff. No bonus, no promotion, nothing. You even be ridiculed. And you go to a point you get frustrated. Sometimes your money, aside the fact that it cannot take you home for the month, sometimes if you are in operation as a tailor, you use that same money to pay for shortages. What, what, is, what, is, what is shortages? Mm. The, what we mean by shortages is as a cashier, when you come in the morning, you go to the vault to get money out there, you're going to pay to customers. Maybe, for example, you are given three million naira to start your work with. At the end of the day, you must balance. What we mean by balance is what you have in your till and the physical cash in your hand must be equal. Even your till, after your transaction, either credit or debit, as in withdrawal or deposit, whichever transaction share, at the end of the day, in your till, you have like five million naira in your till. Your physical cash must be five million. So if the physical cash is 4.5 or let's say 4.9 and you have 5 million in your till, then there is a shortage somewhere. You see that you have overpaid a customer or you have posted deposit transaction two times. That's why you're having that. So you need to call over. But when you do that, if you are able to trace it, if it's a double posting, you can correct it. If you have overpaid a customer, you, if you are lucky and you call the customer and it's a good customer, you get your money back. If it's a bad customer or you cannot even reach it or you don't even know the customer, you have to use your money to pay for the shortage because the bank's money must be complete. I have been in that situation December 2013. I wanted to post 5,000 for a client. I posted 50,000. Before I got to know it was around 6 p.m. in the evening. That was December 24, 2013. The guy has, to remember it. Was a day to Christmas. <laughs> the guy has withdrawn the money. I called him on phone. He told me he thought it's his money and he has spent it that there's nothing he can do. I had to force use my salary for that month to pay that money before I went after him to recover my money. That's the story for another day. I understand the pain of this guy. Why he wanted to quit or why he quitted this job. Because it's very frustrating, especially in Lagos. When the cost of living is on the high side, you have to pay for accommodation, feeding, transport. That money is nothing to write to me about. But where he got it all wrong is anything you want to do in life, you need to get adequate information. You need to have a mentor in that line that can guide you to navigate from where you are to where you want to go. Another mistake he did is he wanted to have a car washing company, but he went there as an employee. And as an employee, you can never be richer than the person that is employing you. That's just the truth about life. Because the person is going to pay you out of the income is generating from that business. And we all know, no employer will pay you more. They only pay you a fraction they know is commensurate to what they think you are doing for them. The remaining bulk of the money goes to them. So if you wanted to have a business in car wash. He's supposed to have a company of his own where people work for him. And he has to do his feasibility studies. It's very important in business. You don't just set up business anyhow, anywhere. You need to do your visibility study about the location. Can this business actually thrive in this place? If you bring a car wash business to an area that is very local and there is no much vehicle plying that route, or you don't have much of movement, you're not going to succeed. But if you have a car wash business, a strategic place where you have a lot of cars and companies around that needs to wash their car, there's every likelihood that that person is going to succeed. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to that. I Because I, I, I don't want a situation where you would influence people's responses. Okay. Because it's obvious that you've given this a bit more considerable thought. Okay, so let's just get the people's responses and then we'll okay. come back. So just I just want you to capture, remember your thoughts. Your The last thoughts we have are, you're talking about feasibility studies. Okay, and so we'll, we'll get we'll eventually get there so that we don't get ahead of ourselves. Okay. 
because you said so many things, particularly about, so you understand where he was. Yeah. The salary is 70 grand. Okay, and as far as he's concerned, if he was told that he could make 5,000 naira per day, if you calculate 5,000 naira per day times 30 days, that's 150,000. 50, that's double of what he's earning as a bank teller. Double yes. plus 10. Eh? Double <laughs> plus 10. Thank you, Dai. He might give up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's where we are. Okay, so this is this story. So did you quit your job to pursue? Did you quit your job to pursue your passion like him? Because you said you've been there before. Yes, I said I've been in this shoe before. Um, but you didn't quit your job then? Huh? I will not say I quit my job. I actually said I wanted to set up a real estate company. I registered a company. I wanted to do a kind of a partnership with a friend, then about two of them. And I had a mentor in real estate line that was guiding me. But along the line, the fund for the startup wasn't coming in. Then one of the friends, because I was the brain behind it, I was the one that set up the company. So I had about 99% of the shareholding. Person wanted us to have 50-50. But my mentor cautioned me not to try that, especially at the formative stage when the company is not yet shaped based on his own experience and how the team badly affected him. So because we couldn't agree and all that, so that my friend went his way and I could not on my own source for the money, couple with Nigeria being dubious. Because when you are going into business in Nigeria, you need to be very careful. Both your producer, your buyer, everybody there somehow dubious you can't really get their mind so i had to point the idea for a moment and then try to continue in my career path i'm still working in the banking Welcome sector but i've let the contract job about eight years ago into a full-time one that's better than that okay so we'll, we'll come back to that and all that so um so do you have, still a, question on, for him? Yeah, do you have a question for him yes, okay. with regards to his career path and this guy can we can we take that question with regard to his career part later? Can you ask a question that relates to what this guy is saying? Yes. Okay. It's the same question. And I want to ask if contract um, staff in banks, if they are eligible to take leave. Yes, they are eligible to take leave. Okay, so that brings me to this guy. He put his head in one basket. I feel like he should have just taken leave, maybe two weeks. And even if he's going to leave his family house, he knows his job is still waiting for him in case this one doesn't work out. So go to wherever it is, go and check out the car wash um, job mm -hmm. and see if it works for you. And if it doesn't, go back after your leave and continue your job. Does everybody agree with him? Yeah. Or agree oh, with him? Yeah. That she should have tested the waters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. So you feel that the car wash business, the way the car wash business is, he could, she, he could have made a decision on what the revenue would have looked at, would look like within two weeks to four weeks. Okay, so that's beautiful. So in that case, with that option available, since you didn't take that particular option, you think this was a reckless decision? Yeah. Okay, so that leads us into the next conversation, all right? So how exactly do you go about it when you have to build something or you have to build a business in an industry where um, you cannot determine the viability within two weeks? Okay. okay, I'll say something. In his case, he wasn't actually trying to build a business. Mm -hmm. He went to work for someone to watch for like to wash cars for someone, he went to be an employee. Just he was not trying to build a business. And I'm sure the person that told him about that car wash business mm -hmm. told him about maybe starting a company, a car wash business. That's what I think. And he went to, you know, wash cars for people. Okay, so let's flip this right now. Let's okay, assume this man let's assume this man wants to start a car wash business. Okay. All right. Whether I like it or not, if he's gonna start a car wash business. You start somewhere. He's going to have to start somewhere. Yeah. In this particular case, he went to work for somebody and then he learned that you can't make that large amount of money in that location. Yeah. If he had taken a loan and he had rented a place in that location, he probably still would have lost, lost money. But now he will now be in a position where he will now own the rent and everything. And he'll be in a much... Right now he has lost his job. But he's not owing money. He's still safe. He's still... He's not as safe as if he was back at his job, I'm but he's still much safer concerned. than somebody who has taken a bank loan that the bank is dragging you. Okay. All right. Now, the question, the follow-up question to that is, is, what do you do? If you wanted to start a car wash business, for instance, you, cannot, you can't recoup all your money for a car wash business in a week or in a month. Yes. Okay. So what do you do in situations where it's going to take a large amount of time all right, sir. to pursue before you can begin to see the rewards. Because everybody, it's it's not, 
if this had worked fine, if he was making 10,000, wouldn't hear anything about it. Even the person that is lamenting, he will not tell that. He will just be making his money coolly and you won't hear anything. <clears throat> Usually when you hear about people's business transactions or bad decisions, is when the stuff has backfired in their hands. Okay. All right, so I want to something. The people that were paid by Dazuki and the rest, they, when they were getting paid, we didn't hear anything. <laughs> they they too. All right, sir. Can I give, can I send that question? Do you want to answer that question? Yes, I want to. I want to answer. You want to answer the question? Let's have him answer the question and we'll come to you, please. All right. I think, and then I want to, we also want to learn from your own experience, yeah. Okay. So I think um, anyone that wants to start up a business, um, either be it fintech, either be it anything you want to do, either be it um, selling of bread or acara or tomatoes, I feel you have to have this in the back of your mind that you might not succeed. Just be prepared for it. The entrepreneurship game is not an easy journey. You have to you have to be sure that you will lose. Even by failing is a means for you to succeed. Because once you fail, the guy earning 500 or 1,500 per day, if he's someone that has passion for his job, he won't quit. I was earning 4,000 to 5,000 then. That was um, 2016, 17. From 300 downwards for my own passion. I, I knew what people said to me now. Uh -huh. So I knew. So, but if you have your dreams, you have your goal, just have it in mind that you will fail. Even as I sit here, I have it in mind that I would someday fail. I might actually do a business and I will fail woefully, but I won't give up because this is life. You understand? For this kind of guy, he's just trying to survive. He's just trying his way, his path to get out of poverty. But passion doesn't work that way. You understand? Passion is what you love doing, irrespective of if it's paying you or not. You get it now? So for this guy, you should either go and get a job. Not everybody would do entrepreneur or be an entrepreneur, I mean. Some have to work for some people. You understand? But for someone like me, I can't work for anybody. I love money and I will go every limit or every length to get money legally. So that is it. That's what I have Sorry, to say. the question I want to ask you is this. Okay. Using this guy as an example. Now, this is somebody that has lost his parents. Okay. He doesn't have any support. Okay. Even though it's not his passion, okay. he needs to survive to meet his daily needs, his daily obligation, as in the, the basic needs of life. Like you, and I don't know, maybe you still have support for you to pursue your passion. So somebody like this, how does he balance it? I think if he wants to follow his passion and he does not have any support anywhere, to okay. support him financially in order to meet his needs. Okay. Before you before you answer that question, the question you have, you have a question. Oh, yeah. Similar things. You want to answer his question. Okay. So let's hear his Imadi's thoughts and then you, I think you should move the microphone. Okay. So I feel for someone like that or for someone like me as a scenario, 200 level, I don't think, the last time my parents spent money on me was 200 level in school. I've always loved to hustle. Although they are living fine, they have the money, but I don't think they spent money on us. I'm the last one of my family and my siblings are doing well, but I'm doing better off than them. So, but the difference is because I'm an entrepreneur, but for this kind of guy, for him to survive, he has to have it in mind. Forget about your parents, forget about anybody that wants to assist you. Nobody assisted me. I, I, I actually had it in mind, not to even depend on anybody. So for this kind of guy, he should keep pushing. Now, what you just need to do is, is that he tries to own up his own business on that same couch and think of how he can bring in people in. That's just it. Even if he's making 2,000, then he has to cut all expenses. 2,000 times 31 days, that's 61K. It's still better than that 70K that yet he still collects more money from his friend. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Hmm. Now, let me explain. The money you make uh, with your own end working if it's your own business, even though it's lesser than the amount they are paying you, you are working as, uh, it's better off than that because someday and one day, that money you are making would not remain the same. But I can tell you that that business you are doing, either you like it or not, in the next four years, if there will be any changes, it can be just 20K or 30 or 50K, depending on value. I don't like to say this, but I think... <laughs> I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. I don't say. think that, that point you made is quite important. Okay, you don't um, agree with his point. Okay, um, all right. Please take note of the things you don't agree with his point. All right, I don't want this because I don't agree with his point. You also don't agree. So please just take note. We'll analyze it. You, you, we'll come back. We'll come down to. There's a reason why. There's a reason why we have this. Okay, 
when you have a lot of counselors, there's safety because you can see through people's lived experiences. Okay. Um, a lot of times we do not, um, we don't factor in the support systems we have. Well, even when we say we don't have support systems. Sure. All right. And I understand, I have an idea of exactly where everybody is coming from. All right. I have that idea. But I want to us, I want us to go through everybody's point of view. Okay. So let's hear what Dave has to say. And then uh, we'll come down all right. to this. Um, I want to actually do two points. I think the first point is um, from the question you asked him that he's an orphan and all of that. So I have a friend too, Peter knows him. He's an orphan too, <coughs> and his parents died while bringing the one. And it was almost looking as if things were not going to work. But today he's a graduate and he's doing fine. But the, the journey was quite tight because at the point, during our IT, he had to step back, do more work, plead to the school so they can give him extra, so he can, he can make more money to further his tuition fee. Even that sometimes in lectures, he has to step out, go and do some extra work, come back. So that was how he lived his life. And today, I can tell, he owns an apartment and he's doing fine. And even the work he's presently doing, he's earning 200,000 and he's about to quit. The, he's not even, he has resigned from the job to actually chase something better. So I just feel as long as you don't give up and you always have um, that wheel of fire in you that burns, you would actually get to where you are going to. That is one. Then two is coming to the aspect of how to actually run a business or you want to become your own self entrepreneur, right? So you don't just start to build your room from the highest point. You have to start building it from by big by bricks. So, for instance, um, if you actually please, um, maybe a Yoruba woman, I'm just saying, sorry for being tribalistic here, a Yoruba woman and a Igbo man, and you put them into like, maybe they are selling foodstuffs and all of that. If you come and check, in the next 10 years, that Igbo man will still continue to own the business. If care is not taking the Yoruba man, I have dropped the business in maybe a year or two. That happened to my mom too. So, I think what happened is because the Igbo man would take a long time to serve, learn the trade. Who are my targets? Who am I selling these trades to? Who are I coming to buy? How do I continue to stay in process? You see that learning process? Some people will be like, I, I, can't, I can't wait to actually make it, but you have to go through rigorous learning. You have to say, Kokotoma Jata, Ide Agbono. That is to say, you have to put the work to work. You have to serve. So likewise, someone that is probably um, a white collar job person like me, I'm an architect. Before I say I want to actually start my freelancing, I have to serve. I have to work for someone. Now, I was even earning very little. Before I went to probably go and meet the person that I was serving at, I was earning more than what the person was paying me while I was doing my freelance. But because I had to sharpen my skill, because um, all those firm, all those big firms, they get bigger jobs. Those bigger jobs are the ones that are going to help you to actually make you know that yes, you can actually do well on your own too. Because if you do, if you don't face those type of obstacles, you might just say, okay, you just want to start. Can you catch your last thoughts, please? All right. So as I was saying, um, when I finished school, before I started working for the person, I was earning, I think maybe 150k. But like if I'm trying to sum everything. 150k at times 200. But when the person offered me the job, I was earning 90,000 naira. And I was not, I don't even have the luxury of time to start going to do extra works because the works was very much and really tight. But I was happy that the obstacles I faced while I was with the man were very much and I did some works that actually boosted my resume. So by the time I say, okay, after some while, I could say, yes, I can step back and say, I want to do my own personal thing. And thank God, now, I am taking up those kind of big jobs and I'm delivering. So what I'm just trying to say is, before you double into entrepreneurship, you will have to serve. And you need knowledge. Yes. Okay, so that's a summary of what it is that you're saying. Um, let's come back to Gabriel and then we'll take, I'll take the thoughts of people who, I'll take thoughts of, uh, we'll take this conversation in a different, in different direction. We'll talk about people around the entrepreneur. So I don't hear stories of your experiences being around entrepreneurs. Okay, so Gabriel, let me hear your thoughts and then. I will, will pick, will, right now, after you, we'll talk to the ladies. I want to start from the story of this uh, young man who we got that report of. First of all, he, 
he needs to come straight, right? He he nobody is chasing chasing him out of his parents' house. And the last I checked, he can still go back and amend his life. The the friend, the straight and direct warning: if he wants to keep this guy as his friend, he has no business inviting him to the state where he is, especially since he has said he is also struggling. There's no way out there. So he has to be open and straight with his friend and tell him that you can't come to me right now. You have to fix yourself up in Lagos and really quick. That's one. Then, um, well, if we're, if we're going to go back in retrospect, I would say quitting the job was a very, very dumb move. And irrespective of whatever is happening in that bank, at least the banking job could foot some bills, if not everything. It's better to have a little income coming in than to have nothing. And I know he thought he was being passionate by risking it all, but that's, those are actions of, uh, of, of somebody who... What, what if he has worked in the bank for 10 years and he hasn't gotten any promotion? Salary has not been reviewed. And Good. he's looking I'm, at that. I'm, I'm spending the prime of my years uh, working here. in the, in the, the is, If they are not going to review the salary, he's not going to get promotion. Contract. Yes, contract but, <laughs> but if but he spent 30 years, there, that thank you. Thank you. Be, you can be, it's be easier to get a work. job when you're on a job. Yeah, but he did. He got a job when he was. Job just That's not a job. That's not a job. He's work. Yes, that one I work. In fact, <laughs> but contract job is not a job. Will he be accepted so. as a teller in the bank? Will, you, will he be accepted as a teller in the bank without education? No. But mm -hmm. any idiot can do the. Uh, no, 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 no. no. I, I think I think have to say something, sir. Hold on, hold on. Maybe no, maybe let's, the, let's, let's maybe the word I use. Uh, uh, any idiot, truly, even a goat can be trained to wash cars. What are we saying? <laughs> Now, the difference between, let me say something. The difference we are not looking down on no, any job. No, I'm not looking down on that. I'm even going, okay. But just hold on. Um, the difference between the uneducated person doing a business and the educated person doing a business is that education. You can't go to school and still live the life of someone that does not go to school. Now, listen, hold on, hold on. That's I, sounding I, like um, a motivational motivation speaking. I'm sorry. This is not real. Yeah, we are really being real. I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking. No, whatever I say. Bro, there's no real that wants to come out of what you're about to say. I've been there two billion times. There are people who have gone to school and are living the life of uneducated people. Uneducated, yes. We have to be practical. Practical and real. Okay. The reason why the reason why we're having this career part, I'm not debunking what you're saying. I'm just. We have to have this conversation because these are things that people who are going to watch this video are going to see. They may not, and they will not, they may not be able to comment, but in their mind, they're like, these guys are not being practical. Yeah. Okay. There are people who are going to go through difficult and hard times. I think, let me give, let me say something. So like I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guy talking about, of course, is good to follow your passion, but there's something you guys are missing, which you have said, he has said, and people follow their passion. One thing, the guy had something. The guy, he had money to eat on a daily basis. That's why he could afford to follow whatever dream is following. Do you understand? Now, assuming now, if you don't have any, any, let's say, uh, any cash flow to keep you going, let's say for this month, passion can't even come to your head. Your, your first strategy is, how will, yes, now, how will I survive first? So any passion you are following means that you have something somewhere, either a support system or a friend that can give you food or the money you have saved somewhere else or something like that okay, that so, you can pull from. So you are bringing the issue of support system. Support systems. Bond we'll rates. Bond rates. Bond rates. We'll get there. So just mm -hmm. take the issue of support. We'll get there. The commission hasn't gotten support system on bond rates. We're still exploring, we're exploring the mind of people who are taking this journey. We'll get to support systems. That's external. So you are, there's a point you wanted to clarify. Yes. Can you clarify that point in the meantime so we can get back to Imadi because, okay. because he is the one everybody is actually debating. So. Now, the young man leaving his banking job to go and try out um, a car wash, number one, he, from the story we read or the report, we, it's not clear if he was ever envisaging being a business owner. He was just looking for plain more money. And the plain more money logic will always get fools in trouble because, okay, because you're going to run into these kind of troubles because he didn't think of every job or every money source has an ecosystem. Like everybody has said, that, that um, car wash business, if he was maybe a partner and then he had made the decision of looking out um, cash flow of the business, if he had looked at, even looked at the books of that particular business before going to work, he would have known better. But he just took something his cousin told him over the phone, I believe, and dashed so, so, that's, so, so 
You're talking about it. Now, we just, let's not get fixated on the idea that it's, it's a car wash business. It can okay? be anything. It can be anything. And I've it done be, that. Yes. And we'll get to your stories. And the reason why, even, the reason why you are here is because that in the, in, the, in, the, in the lifespan, I think we've known ourselves for almost 30 years, if not more. Mm -hmm. And the time that we've known each other, I think, you've, I think I know you've probably done over 20 different businesses. <laughs> okay. We've done over 20 different, we've had those conversations. And that's why, and I want you to draw from each of those, if you can run through each of those businesses, it's important. People have life, life is made up of hours. Your life is made up of hours. And for each time that you spend going in a direction that does not take you to your destination, it's painful. So it's important for people to be able to learn from it. All right? You understand me? So that's why, that's why we are here, really. Okay, so let's let's go back to you are making a case for it and let's let's hear your case. Like I said earlier, I said you can't compare someone, somebody that is not educated to someone that is educated. Majority of youth goes they go through school and some just go to school. Now, there are two different things. I studied accounting, I'm into software development. As I speak to you, I don't focus more on my software development anymore. I'm trying to dive into real estate. I run a POS business, but before then, let me just give you a basic thing about myself, how, it's, how I started, so you can understand what I'm trying to say. I've said this earlier before, leaving a job of 300K to a, to a passion teaching. It doesn't make sense to anybody to leave a 300K to a passion of 5K, 4K. I remember the school leading light. It's not far already or yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You can make findings. I'm not there's no there's no life. Sorry, sorry. So hold on, hold on. Hold on. After going through all those stress, I went through learning. I wasn't there for the money. I moved from that school to another school to another school, learning how it works. But something there was a day, I think that was 2017, 2018. I got into a school. I got used to this principal. And I understood that for a school to survive, they have to collect full payment from each student. There's something struck into me and I said, ah. it means that everybody here, yeah, collective money here yeah, makes you a billionaire or a millionaire. So what am I doing as a, a teacher then? Let me just try and improve my teaching skill. Let me go into what coding and robotics. 2018, 20, 2018 to 2019, I started a business. I named that business Alo Academy. The first school we got, I think the first school, yeah, Kingsmead. I think Kingsmead is not far from here now. Uh -huh. I think Kingsmead offered for 500K, 500,000, that was 2018. And when she said this was what she can offer, I said, no problem. I was still doing the job. My mind was different from that 500. Now, the difference between my own teacher then, while I was little, and me, we are both teachers, but I have changed the manner of way, I'm change, and I have changed the manner of way I explain things to people. Do you get what I'm trying to say? We have programmers, how many of them get successful in life? Because they don't understand the principle of money. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. That guy there, if it sits down very well, give him one year, two years, you make it true. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's what I'm trying sorry. to say. Yes. Yeah, so, right, so, hold on. Can I? Okay, so you I guys have entered into dangerous territory. All right. You're telling me that this guy, guys, okay. You're telling me that this guy who makes 1,500 in a week, okay. let's run it by one year. Let me no, run the I, math. I, I, in a week. Yes. He said he watches three cars there. Um, no, he said, let's he just said let's, one five in a day. A day, a day. A day. Please one take five. us back to the page. Yeah, one five after one five. Yeah. five. Yeah. Please take us back to the page. Five thousand. Five ish. Can we go to full speed? Five. Plus five. Plus five. Plus one five. And he got five hundred. All right. So the reason for his lamentation is that things are not the way his cousin told him. He said since last week Monday up to this moment, they have only watched a maximum of three cars per day. And at the end of the day, the owner only gives them 500 naira each in which he used for eating. Okay, so it's making 3,500 naira per, per week. Let's just say 4,000. Let's say 
But let's make it tricky because it won't work every day. He's gonna take the Sabbath day or mm. a day of rest. <laughs> the only way the guy can escape. Um, he's gonna make one hundred fifty thousand in a year. I, 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 the I only way the guy can escape this uh, is for him to start his business. How will he start his business? Because he's no money. money. Now this is. I have, I have no, I want, to, I want us to listen. Okay, okay let's just How listen. To I that. think. I think. Sorry, I don't want to say something that you said. Now, look at your analysis very well. I. I now, if you look at that stuff you did, there wasn't passion. It was what? Well. Let me tell you now. You left your job. Okay. To follow what? It's not your passion. They now, if you look at now, passion. I'm trying to backdate it. Let's let's allow him to let him let him complete his statement. So I'm trying to backdate it. Now, initially, I'll go for this people here. You said you were instructed, right? Now, it's not as if you love teaching that much, right? Now, that's even number one. Now, you entered the business, and along the line, you were learning. You, you could have chosen to teach music or French. Why coding? Because you feel that coding is a bit robotic. You can, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just trying to be logical here. Do, do, do you understand? Now, I'm telling you that if you had followed your passion, I was teaching French, you probably won't make a dime. Okay. Um. The point I'm trying to make is that the, the thought to that story is not a passion. The thought to the story is that there was a path which looked lucrative and you entered there. Do you understand? So it's not a passion. So the passion is not enough. To carve a, a, a path. I think you, you just said something that I think I need to elaborate for you. Okay, so basically, right from the age of. Sir Imadi, sorry, just a minute. Please, everybody remember so that you don't feel uncomfortable. This is a debate. It's a debate of ideas. Okay. It's not a. We're not casting anybody. Any. You understand? This is a debate. It's not like the previous. Mm. It may be. You, you, may, you, may be, you may not be comfortable. At the end of this conversation. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry to take the mic from you, but let me just do 30 seconds to quickly explain something. Okay. The court system all across the world does not work on the principle of justice. It works on the principle that if I hire my lawyer, you hire lo your, our lawyer, we argue in front of a judge, the truth will come out. The best the argument will give their value. Not necessarily even best argument, but the yeah. truth. If I am lying, and you, by the time you go back and forth and you're arguing, eh, the process of us arguing, the truth will come out. You will figure out who is lying and who is telling the truth. The judge will now decide, okay, you know what? Let's speak the best of this person's argument. So let's arrive at a compromise that would that would be best and fair for both parties, not for the person. You may be right, and you will see end up losing in court. So the goal of this process, this debate over career, is so that by the time we are done with it, anybody who watches this will be able to pick the best of arguments from everybody's side. Because, like the Yoruba people will say, Ankpe, go, Ankpe, go. Which translates that, when we are complete, collectively, uh, collective, we are wiser. But it's not as if when we are collectively, we, we become stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Everybody so that's the Bible point. Says, the multitude of cancer, that is safety. Okay. <laughs> let him. So let him. He has. Okay, so he, everybody is debating him now. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So let's let's let hear what he said. I think. Let me just open up to you, so you can understand. So before you've not been. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Probably he doesn't understand. <laughs> All right. Um. Maybe at the age of 14, 15, I've always loved the computer system, working on the computer system. I, I go through, I love at school hacking. So then there was this um, free browsing, consume me, doing all this cheat and the rest. So I was that good. I know how to manipulate IPs and ports. So I love systems. So, but when I got to the age of 16, seven, I, I, I left school 16, I got into university at 18. Between 16, 17, I wanted to make money. So someone told me that, oh, you have to be, you have to go into accounting to know how to make money. I think I, I just had that bad conception of how, how to make money. But I got into accounting now, Olabi Sonabanjo. And what I got there was debit, credit, carry paper. <laughs> like, this is not what I'm here for now. Like, yeah. You understand what I'm, I'm trying to say? Is. So I started pushing. I think to a level, I worked with one, um, what's it called? My choice at Agoyewe. The cell phones, the repair phones, the format phones. So I joined them. So it has always been fixing people's problem. So I've always loved mm -hmm. doing that. So the moment I finished school, 2015, I worked with a company that was paying 300 for one year. I wasn't comfortable. I can't be going to work every day. Is it 300 annually or 300 monthly? Monthly. Okay. Wow. It said for monthly. one year. No, I said I can't be working for one year. Okay. Like every day. I can't do that. I can't be working for you for every day. I can't. It's preferable I work for myself. But I wasn't getting it. Because after removing the 300,000, you pay this, pay that, pay that. There's no money. 
And I love life. I love to live the life I want. I might not buy clothes. I might not buy... Lifestyle. But I, I love life. Let me buy one gadget. I'll be happy. I can buy a gadget. I prefer buying gadgets than clothing and the rest. So, I think 2017, I got a dream that you have to move from this path to teaching. Will I go and teach accounting? Will I go and teach economics? No. It is what I love doing, which is a computer. So when I got to this school, I told them, I, they said, what can you do? I showed them, I said, they saw accounting there. I said, yeah, go and teach accounting. I said, I'm not teaching accounting. It is computer I want to teach. You can ask the whole of Ibubo there, if you know Ibubo, ask of me, Stephen. There is nobody, there is no student I will teach that will never understand IT. If you are even the dullest among all. Okay, so we, we get that. We well, listen, we're coming to the, we, we get to that right now, the Genesis story. Yeah. Now we're coming into the world of business. Okay. And the world of business, there are a couple of rules that govern the world of business. When we, this conversation started in the WhatsApp group. Okay. And he is saying, is he is saying that if you are taught French, you probably may not be having this conversation so because I, you will be competing with other people who graduated from French language teaching French. Please tell me, is there any school in Ikorudu part of Lagos, in Ikorudu part of Lagos rather, mm -hmm. that will pay a French teacher half a million naira? Mm -hmm. Half a month. million naira. Any school? My my notes two. That too. <laughs> yes. That might as, pay. As Kings um, Kingsfield. Kingsfield yes. and Lighthouse. They will pay a French teacher. Um, they can't even pay. 500,000. It might not be. They, ca they can't okay, even pay 200. Okay, okay so he's like, telling that they I'll will tell not. you a reason why. Okay. Can I, can I proceed, sir? Okay. I'll tell you a reason why. I never knew IT was going to be the game like that would make everything open. The time I started coding, I never knew anything about coding. Like maybe it was a STEM program or so. I just started it with a school. If you go around all these schools, they can't pay you 200 as a French person or Spanish teacher. Mm -hmm. The reason why they are paying me that amount because that is the reigning thing. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. now you've gotten into, exactly. you've, you've entered our territory now. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's stop there. Let's stop the conversation there, okay? Um, I'll pause your conversation. And all right, so let's, I'll pause your conversation. I think, uh, I have some stuff to respond uh, no, to him. I'm no, not no, I'm speaking to you again now. Okay, now. Oji, Oji, let's, let's hear uh, Daisy, let's hear, Oji. Let's hear um, Gabriel and Okomba. But take note of what he said. The last thing he said was they're paying that because it's it's in demand. Yes. It's raining. All right. Okay. Um, the truth is, um, let's not make it look like you can only succeed when you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, let's not make it look like that because that's the vibe I'm getting. Like you can only succeed mm. when you. I mean, I'm a love of entrepreneur. I want to be a businesswoman. Do you understand? Because you know, yeah. But let's not make it look like people working for other people cannot make yeah. as much money. Do you understand? Because the truth is, not everybody will be an entrepreneur. So if everybody is struggling, you see people will start, you know, losing money and making mistakes they're not supposed to make. All right. Even the motivational speakers that make it look like entrepreneurs are like the big deal or something, they're also making money from that thing they are saying. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah, they're also making money from it, from what they are saying. So, of course, they have to say something. Yeah, being an entrepreneur is good, but let's not make it look like you can yeah, only yeah. succeed or make money when you're an entrepreneur. Even abroad, you can't, the way we are doing it, entrepreneur is not like that over there. Even if you're an entrepreneur in Nigeria, you go there, you might end up working for someone. Do you get All right, so we, we, we've taken your, we've taken your chat on that. Let's let's go to, let's go to Oji and then we'll, we'll, we'll take okay. the ladies. We'll no. take the ladies' comments. I'll come back to the banker and then because he said something about I want I want to ensure we get back to the issue of feasibility studies and that's why I stopped him. I'm trying to connect the dots. He mentioned something. He mentioned that something. He said that the reason why coding robotics is an issue, all right, is because it's raining compared to something like um, it's raining and it's because it's the only supplier of it. You don't have much people doing it. No okay. much competition. No, no much more competition. competition. No. Okay. Probably we'll go into then. Eh? Probably what? As of then. Eh, but even right now, you I don't want to I, I don't want to argue with I don't want to argue. You've brought some things out and I I, I thank you that you have I thank you that you have um okay. you are open minded enough to engage in this debate with us. Okay. You know, I'm not trying to prove a point. I'm trying to connect your conversation so that by the time we are done with this conversation, whoever listens to this can make informed decisions. 
That's all I'm trying to do, okay? And then also to force you to be reflective so that the things that have made you succeed, you can go back on them and armor in and concentrate on them and eliminate things that are unnecessary. So that's okay. We'll, yeah. We'll hear and then we'll take care. Um, of course, everybody give it to you. You are a great guy. Now, I just want to tell you that, you know, it's, it's a general advice. Do you understand? There are, are times, there are principles that work for everybody. At times, there are those specific stuff that work for some special people. Before I start, you said if you are earning five, 500K somewhere that, and you are working at a job and you are working as an entrepreneur and get 50K, yeah, 50K is better than 500K, but it's not better. Better 500K first, you to be guiding. No, no, then do your idea, probably on weekends or so. That's number one. Now, what I want to say, especially, is that now, you said that in your statement, because I'm trying to bring us back to this, Statement. Now, in your statement, there was something that was key to that move that you had, which was what dream that you had. You said you were instructed that who instructed? So who instructed? You? I think it's, it's, it's just my dream, like dream now. Okay. Yeah. Dream. Now, now you can't tell me that that is a passion. You love coding. You could have well just gone out and be building art for people, but you went to teach. You left three hundred k to go to five k. That is not passion. Do that now, no, if that was passion, you're, 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 now you are saying that you are entering real estate. Does that mean that your passion, your passion changes from teaching to real estate? Yeah, now, Sorry, now it's me now. Uh, my points now, my points now, I'm just trying to debunk that point that you going to teach is not a passion. Mm -hmm. I mentioned something that, you mentioned something that uh, they paid you for Rakuli because it was in demand. Of course, you have to follow the markets. If your passion has been tailoring, and you are doing the you won't get as much money as you are getting. Do you understand? I won't so, I won't answer to that. Hold on. His passion is yeah, the peak. So, hold on now. Actually, Let's just bring this to you. Hold on. Ah, you said something <laughs> which was very five water. Just make note. Just make note of the things you disagree with. And um, there's something you said. Oh, if, if that dream, eh, if that dream, if you had been instructed in that dream to sell pure water, you would have done it. Now, it means that if you had supposed it was pure water and you have done it, you know, you don't come and tell us that your passion was pure water. No. Do you understand? So, the 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 what was the the apex of your story was the dream you had, and the world of business only function on dream. Do you understand? Does it function on the function on principle? Of course, I expect that you did this and the stuff work, but generally, it doesn't function on your dream. That's the principle. Okay, so, so that's that part of I, your I, dream. I, I, I think I will just this. Let me let me just let me bring something. I'll come to your point. Sorry. Okay, people you, people have convictions. Okay, and when people have convictions, it takes them in particular directions. Okay. I do not want to negate the role because I don't want to negate the role of supernatural, particularly with people's belief in um, in, in divine in divine direction and in a deity. Okay, let's not take that away from Imadi's story. In fact, I would even say that that's I, I, I admire that about him because. No, I mean, he's not taking it away okay. from Imadi's story. Just, he always said that should, it should, should put it in that context, context yes. not yes. in passion. Can I try to say that line? Can I try to say that We'll come to you, sir. I'll come to you. Oji, okay. Oji, let's, let's, I want, I want to hear the thoughts of the ladies. You had something to say. No, right now, I want to hear the thoughts of the ladies and then we'll come back to feasibility studies. Please, let's keep in mind that we have to connect um, a statement about something that is in, that is raining, that is in demand with what he said about feasibility studies. We have, put, we have put that connection together. Otherwise, this conversation will be incomplete. Okay, so you, you are saying, you're about to say something. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. I just want to say You're faith, right? Yeah, faith. Faith, okay. I just want to, um, she said something. She, I don't know her name. She said something. Daisy. Then, yeah. She said something about um, the employees and the entrepreneur. Then I also bring something that no billionaire make it to salary. Now let's take for example, look at um, um Dangote. I don't want. To, I don't want. To listen, you, you, when you say things on this show, you, you can debunk it. it. Yeah, and I will tell you that there are lots of billionaires that were paid through salary. Okay, no. Steve Ballmer of Microsoft mm -hmm. was a salaried employee and is a billionaire. It depends yeah, on how much you are earning. Yeah, exactly. Listen, I don't want to, let, let me tell you, this is this is the issue. And I cannot in good faith allow people to make claims here. All right? You cannot let go. You cannot, you cannot eliminate market forces. All right? From your conversations. Do you understand me? If, and I'll give an example. If I discover, let's assume I discover a particular, a particular way of converting hydrogen 
and oxygen into gold. Let us might find a way of doing that. And I, I guard it so much. I guard the secret and I hire employees and I give them shares. And it's, it's a skill. It's, it's a process that everybody around the world, they, they want to pump money in. The first sort of employees that get shares in the company, we become billionaires. In fact, if you go and check most of the billionaires eh, who go out to go and start up their own company in Silicon Valley, that's how they got their money. Yeah. So what you have just said right now is what motivational speaker tell yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, but in yeah, reality, yeah, the world yeah, of business yeah. doesn't... And our goal, is to, our goal is to open people's minds. I have to support what Dr. Falabi is saying. You need, you are Everybody you will say in life, yeah. start yeah. from yeah. being yeah. an employee. Majority I, of people start from being an employee before they now move their way up. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to do that to you. Like I said, this is not what we're, no, we're not calling people here. It's a debate. Okay. So let's I want the ladies, I want to hear the ladies' thoughts. We gather your thoughts together and you're gonna you're gonna present them again. But you just entered the debate and you are shut down. So take the shot. <laughs> you're doing you have your response. Career matters. Because this person who has quit his job now is homeless. Yes. And he doesn't know where his next meal is coming from. Yes. Well, he can't follow his passion. Yeah. He can always go back. Family yeah, house means that his parents are dead. That's he's living in a family house. Stuff. That means he's living in a house filled with... So, and friendly and this guy was working in a workplace. He was earning 70k. All right? He has not gotten promotion in years. He doesn't like the job. He's also not living in a family house. He's probably with uncles and aunties that he probably does not like. So he wanted to leave the town. That's the way I interpret it. Mm. If, you, if it was in proper Yoruba culture, you, some Yoruba people would tell you that maybe they remoted the guy out of the house. Mm -hmm. That's what Yoruba people would tell you. And I'm a Yoruba man so that you guys don't think that I'm being tribalistic or whatever. You understand? So the family house is living there. He probably is under pressure having to live with your uncle. Maybe they are sending you on errand to go and buy Gary, to buy this, or someone is talking to you anyhow. You don't want to receive that. And he probably maybe has told them, F you. Maybe he has, he has bullshitted them okay. and parked out of the house. Yeah. To now come back is now hard. You know, that's the situation. Okay, so this guy has followed somebody's advice and his advice he has followed is not wrong. The problem with following business and career advice is not that you will follow the wrong advice. You know the problem. You will follow incomplete advice. They give you advice on how to succeed. They give you three steps and the remaining four steps they have not told you. I didn't want to get into the conversion early because I didn't want to change the direction. All right? But I just don't want to... I want to lock down, close as many tangents as possible. So the ladies right now, guys, we'll come back to you. Does any woman here have any thoughts about this guy's career decision? Yeah. That woman who you have get career man. Okay, so let's hear your thoughts about his decision. Okay. And do you have people in your personal life or people that you know, La Dubu, I'm speaking to you about people that you know on the streets in your neighborhood that are falling into this kind of, um, that have had to make this kind of decisions and how they got themselves out of, out of it. Okay. Sir, it's a debate though. No, I okay, yeah. No hard feeling. Concerning, firstly, I'm going to go on the guy's topic. Before you go into any business, like I, like I will say, firstly, you have to have your capital. You don't just, if you want to go into a business like you are starting afresh, I would not advise you to go for a loan. No. Have you done a business before? Yes. So what's the pass or the fair failure? What was the was the actually uh, the business was not in the right it it was not in the right place for the right target audience. Then so it it's not cap it capital is not the first thing you need. So that's it. <laughs> so they just debunked you. Capital is not the first thing. Yeah. You, you need to learn. 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 You have been be shut down. Just take it there. We'll come back. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next. Let's okay. move. We'll come back to you. Just gather your thoughts again. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on to the. Okay. Uh, you want to enter into the arena of fire? Okay, please. I lay your side. Let's get your level. Let's get All right, so. And the issue with the guy going to work for someone actually is the location that matters. I wish he had gone to like, like even working on that zone, he would okay. have gotten more money than is any where he is now. 
So location matters. Is it? Is it? Is it? No, SBC is there. Yeah, right, it's there, but the ah, the cost, I, I, I know. You yeah. yeah. can't try but, to let it down. That's the, that's the question you're asking. No, according, to, okay, according so, to the story, they gave him accommodation. And we should give it. I ain't now. They give him accommodation now. Ah, people who have been in Ajagbandi. He said he got a room. He got a room. Yes, sir. Can we can we can we come to you, John? Right. And they give him accommodation here. I want you to talk. I want you to show down several people. So, so your own thought, your own is that he should have moved to a more lucrative. Yes. Yes. And but you also have to think about the support system because people don't just magically appear, appear in places. Yeah. They have to transport themselves. Yes, sir. I'll give an example. For example, now, if you live in Ikorodu now, with the present cost, if you live in Ikorodu, the Ikorodu part of Lagos, and for any reason you have to work in um, in Lagos Island, okay, the minimum you are going to spend, minimum you're going to spend on transportation per day is how much? Two okay. Four. Me, I'm spending five K. It's five thousand. Five K. Minimum. So that guy is going to spend if he, if he makes five thousand per day, he will spend that five thousand on transport. And it's lucrative place. And it's a lucrative location. <laughs> No, but it's limited to work. Transport based on this story. Hey, but mm-hmm. in this yeah, story, yeah, he has yeah, accommodation. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, and the is that oh, he has to find the lucrative place. That has accommodation. Listen, this this is it. This is it. If you're going to set up a car wash in Lekki, all right, you set up a car wash in Lekki. For people who run businesses, I'm just I, I just so that we can run through this. If you have land in Lekki, set up a car wash, and you have land in Lekki to set up a car wash and build accommodation for people who are going to be washing for you, you might as well use that land to build a flat that you rent out to people and they pay millions. So effectively, the accommodation for the workers of the car wash is competing with the revenues that you can make eh, from building a flat eh, that you can rent out to people who want to live there. Or you rent out the flat to companies that want. Do you understand? So you have to. Fa- That's why most places where people get accommodation usually they don't get accommodation in high brow areas, unless they probably work in maybe a construction <coughs> company or so that is that builds all these makeshift porta porta cabin yeah. houses or whatever. But we'll come to that. Sorry, so does, I, does anybody have any contrary thoughts? The ladies right now. Okay. Um, Daisy, one other people. What? Okay. Because I want you want to talk. So is there anybody else that has contrary thoughts? Okay, I'm actually finding it difficult to get to your question. Are we talking about the way forward for this guy? Or we're talking about pursuing your passion? Or we're talking about the mistake he made? Okay, so I'm actually... The conversation we are having right now is... is Right now, people have said that... Some people have said that the decision he made was a foolish decision. right? And it was foolish because you mentioned that it did not take four weeks. It should have taken four weeks of leave to pursue it. I have followed up with the question that what happens when you are involved in a business that's going to require a long time before you start seeing revenues? What do you do? That's the question that I asked. And what are your thoughts on that? So she was talking and she mentioned that we want to start a business. The first thing you have to do is you have to get your capital in order. <laughs> okay, so that's what. So we're asking what we want to ask the action point. Because this person was faced. Okay, so let me re, let's recalibrate the question now. Imadi has been here before. In Imadi's story, Imadi told us in his story that he was working at a job, earning 300,000, and then he received divine instruction to start for his passion teaching, five grand teaching coding and robotics, and he got paid a lot of money where he went. So that is, now that is, um, when you hear that story, it will motivate you to go and start your own business. Hmm. Because he's making a lot of money off his teaching, coding, and robotics. But we're trying to analyze the story and to see how easy it is to reproduce it. So what is the decision you are going to make? His first response in his story was that you must be ready to lose a lot of money. You must be ready to experience failure. You understand me? And that's not the kind of thing that is easy to reproduce for most people. Because now money to his, his story is is very real. His story is very real. Yeah, actually, it's like out of ten, it's so point one. Yeah, Seriously, yeah, it's point yeah, one. Because for instance, now, let's say story is rare. It's not, yes, it is rare. Because let's say rare. I was in his I was in his position. I was earning that much. I wouldn't have actually dropped out to to go and start go and teach. I don't know whatever subject he was teaching. If I was the one, what I would have done is move further in in learning. Um, the um, robotic and whatever I was learning, advanced classes. That was what I would have done. Yeah, but there's no issues. way you would. There's no Let way. Let me give you a scenario. Yes, finance Oji. now. 
You have Roger. finance. He didn't have finance now. He said he was earning 300,000. Yes, but there was no finance. I'll say it's crazy. He worked for, he worked for one year. Hey, but you're earning 300,000 now. You have money that is finance. You had money to save up from There was no savings now. There was no savings. I think that was what I used to actually, get a car then. So there was you no How are you living with hey. 5K? I want to understand. So, nah, this, this is, is, what this is, 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 is a good question. Please. I wanted to die. Please, let's, 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 okay, so follow up. Yes, I'm coming to that. Let's Let's get in straight. First of all, for that guy, that guy that left, um, his job. Yeah, the guy left a job to another job, not to a career or to his passion. So you should go and look for another job. It's a different thing. You are starting up a business. Uh -huh. Now, but for me, my own case is different. I, I, the moment I left that job, even before I left the job, I was, I didn't rent an apartment outside. I was staying with my parents. Mm -hmm. You understand? And there is no one day that my parents would ask you for to drop money at home for feeding. Mm -hmm. you so were your parents so, feeding you? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so. You understand? Oh, so, you so when I started earning that four or five thousand era. You were eating at home? Yes. So I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, so I'm this going is like, hold on, for you to be able to follow that round. Hold on, so I was, I hold on, hold on. Gentlemen, now, now you understand why this is a debate. Yeah, 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 yeah. By the time you start debating, the truth, yes, sir. the truth will surface. Hold on, Sorry, hold, on. hold on, my case is still different. Because <laughs> how, how will you live? You've been you're handing 300k. That's not still even enough for you oh, yeah, to be yeah, five thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your case, so 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 case is different. different. No, no, it's not different. You know, different. you know how it's different. You know how it's different. Hold on, you are not getting it. It's easier for you to navigate that decision because you have support. Your case is different. You know why it's easy for somebody that does not have a parent to feed him or her. That does not have an accommodation like, to do like, like I that. Like I said earlier, it's like not, I said earlier. That. All right, so please pause. You said something now. You 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 refuted it. So can you just repeat what you said because I couldn't. It's easier for him to switch like that. You have a divine instruction to pursue this career, go this way. But you have your parent to feed you. You have your parents' accommodation to stay. So you can move in that light to go and pursue this and learn over a period of time because there's a little or minute support system strong way. It's different from this guy that doesn't have a parent that is an orphan, nobody to feed him on a daily basis. He does not have any accommodation again. It's a two different scenario because I have been there before. No. Oh, I know how the scenario is. Yes, now. We married man with two kids. We don't want to do that. Hold on. Let's please let's, let's this him respond. This guy's scenario mm. is not an entrepreneur. This guy is looking for a job. Okay, what, what you are saying is that even if this guy was an entrepreneur yes, now. and he had to start a car wash on himself. Now, the first thing he needs to do, he has to save up. Are you okay. save up now? I didn't you? save up. Because he had support system. Because, yeah, listen, understand. this guy, like now, for someone like me, at this stage of my life, I don't stay with my parents. I have to save enough money. Yeah, but we are going back because to the business. Business. We are going back unlike, to the business now. But unlike, I'm trying to pick uh, something out. Okay. The way I save money now, I don't save money then because I was staying with them. Because I know even if I don't have money, they will feed me. Yes. But unlike now, if I don't save... And anything happens, where will I go to? Will I now say, okay, I'm not paying my rent? Or will I say, okay, I'm coming back to Ikorodu? No. So I think that's supposed to be in your story. Do you that's what we are saying. Yes. Yes. So, Sir, I want to ask him a right. question. Right. I want to ask him just one question. Can I say something? Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, let, 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 let me. Wait, let, Oji, I'm coming. Oji, let me ask you Oji. a question. All right. See, uh, Oji, that, that's the... Yes. Okay, so let, now you start your question. Yes. And after he talks, we'll hear from Juma. Yes. Um, I want to ask you, um, the actions you took... Let's put it as this. Um, what happened if um, the action you took didn't actually actualize? That is one. And two is, had it been, do you, do you think it's a setback to you? Do you think it's a setback to you? Let's say you didn't go back to teach. You actually pursued to polish what you have actually had passion for and advanced, probably advanced classes, gone for advanced classes. Would you have probably seen it as a setback now or it was not an option for you. You were not thinking in that direction. Okay, so the first question you asked is, um, what if it doesn't work for me? Yes. The truth about entrepreneurship is risk. About business is risk. Mm -hmm. is that, you're not answering this question. Is what uh, will have happened? What will, now, will have happened? Now, I'm heading, I'm heading there. Now, the first thing I had, the thought that came through me was, what if I fail? I had this mindset of, God, if I fail. Because I had options. My mom was saying, go into DSS. Okay, you've left this job. I have connection for you to go into DSS. I refused. 
But what if I failed? Your mom had connections. Yes. That's why you pop in that story. But but I left all those things. No, it, it is a word that will lead to another word, you get. So I, I just need to say that. Now, now, now for let's him, I had that I had that mindset that guy, if I fail, I go. I wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> see, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what you see now. Because I'm going to edit this out too. Because I feel what you did was a setback. No, no, no. That was not a setback. That was a setback. Let him land. It's a setback. That's the question. Let him go. It is a setback, sir. It was a risk. Continue. It wasn't a setback. It was a setback. I said, listen, I said something. I said, if I had failed, I would do I was that sound. When it comes to ed school hacking, I can bypass your phone, bypass your systems. I was that good. I knew that if this thing doesn't work for me, and I want to live the luxury life I want to live as of that time. I just time so, I, but I hope you don't have that. I hope you no, don't no, have I'm that. Saying then, what, I'm just saying then. Right now, have you, have, have you repented <laughs> of your actions? actions now. You saw, I, 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 you're not going to follow that part of you, that line. That part you can't even do that. So what okay, was, so no, what was, no, I need to say something there. For me to to endure between 2016, 17, 18, there was patience there. I had so many reasons, countless. I have guys, if I start mentioning their names that you know in this same Nigeria, that what they do is illegal. We are no, not I think, Mr. Saibadi, I, I think you should be very, very careful direction you are heading because if you continue on this part, I don't know if someone will play the video, you get arrested. <laughs> okay, so just, let's just, let's just hold it there, okay? Maybe what we'll do, we'll do you a favor. If, if we're feeling so, we may glee. You know what, we're not feeling generous. <laughs> I think it's best to just approach the right. The, the so it's me. Okay, so then, guys. What I just want. I want you want to talk. Do you want some of your points? We we'll hear his thoughts. I'll sum up the story. We'll close out the show. We we'll have to close this show in the next ten minutes. Okay. Uh-huh. So you have to miss some of your thoughts. Nah, we'll hear your thoughts. It. I'll summarize I everything. Have to meet. Okay. Yeah, but that's talking now. This is it. I um I I'll just come from one point here. We we are all different. Our perspective are different. What we actually dream for ourselves is different. I have people that all oh, this is a big, big dream. They don't care. All they just want for themselves is have a wife, have two children, have one small business that is actually running the family. They are okay with every other thing. And I have people like me that um, a, a house is small for me to build. My plan is to build an empire. Now, when I finish school, my mom got somebody from Stanley Bank, and as I then, as I started in 16, 80,000 was cool. Then, basics are like 80,000, yeah. And I was looking around that. I won't go for this. I'm not going for this, bar, this banking work. I want to go and that my mom. I told my mom, that's what I want to correct all the units. There is passion. Now, there's something about your passion. You can actually venture your passion into different things. There's some people that their passion is communication. Like if they see you, they can talk for three hours. Now, if you are somebody that knows how to talk, you know how to get into people's head. There are so many things in this industry that you can go into. You can moderate, you can host programs, you can go into teaching lines. I, I know I'm going to, I go to places where I teach physics that they pay people there. They pay them 1,000 naira per hour. Now, when I come, I just run my class for 20 minutes and they just look at me and I build them. But they are paying other people for 1,000, I bid them 4,000, 5,000. They don't just think of it, they pay. Yeah. That is passion. Yeah. So if he says he has passion, it's the passion that there is not passion. Wait, 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 now, you have this thing, you get that skill. Now, when you get to that business, eh? Now, he has the, the passion there is not just the IT stuff. The passion there is this solving of problems. This teaching, this communicating thing. You just look at it like, okay, I, I have a skill in computing. I have a passion in teaching. Now, he has a skill in computing. He can go in, into every other thing in computing. But you just look at it like, okay, let me connect this skill to my passion. And that is why it's working teaching. out for him. Now, this is it. When, when, we go, when we go a different route, we need to know who you have first before you go into a business. 
I know people that, that what they do is cleaning and they make money than bank managers. Exactly. All right, so yeah. I, I may have to stop you here. So we'll take the thoughts of Mr. Solomon because he works in banking, he applies, you've seen several things. And then I'll close out with a summary and I'll give you my recommendations and I'll close out the show. All right, so. Okay. <clears throat> my thought is this. Because when I talk to people, I try to talk to be practical and something that is acceptable all over. One thing I've discovered about motivational speaker and um, people like Juwan and um, um, Madi. Imadi, they don't, um, like you said, they just give the first three, four, five faces of what they do. They don't go into the eat depth of it. And a lot of people just take those information on the surface, work with it, and along the line, they encounter so many problems that are born today. It's like somebody traveling now. So you're looking at me. I could have traveled out four, five, six years. It's not that I can't. But I was working on a lot of information because I have people in different countries that I source information from there before I decide if I want to go or not. For so that when I get there, I will not regret going. So a lot of people in Nigeria, we don't have access to that. We don't have structure. You're talking about passion and skill. That some people who have passion, they don't have skill. Somebody like me, I have passion for football. I have skill in football. I play for my school. I represent Ogun State. I'm working in a bank. And I'm ready to work in a bank because there is no structure in Nigeria that can hate that passion and the skill to come to manifestation. Hold on. So where I'm going is that in as much as you have passion and you want to venture into it, you need to get in-depth information before you jump. Most especially in Nigeria, what works over there in abroad because of their system and government doesn't work here in Nigeria. And if you follow those motivational speakers, you see somebody that does something and it was successful or neat. You didn't know the sacrifices or the downfall or failure that person has gone through. You just want to follow in that light. You might end up regretting it. So you need to get adequate information, in-depth, learn, um, serve, before you decide to jump. So That's thank you. It. Then thank on the issue of the feasibility yeah. study, feasibility study just helps you to know about the business you want to go into, the location you set the business, whether this thing is going to work or not. Because not every business that succeeds in a particular location, like Mr. Falami said, that some people in eyebrow places, it's better they convert their landed property to housing that they'll give to companies or individuals that are setting up a car work. Facilitators will tell you that. It will also help you to know the amount, the cost you need to have to set up your business up and keep it running. I have so, to. I have to do. So let me just do a recap. So thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for everybody being a part of this debate. Okay. This is a debate, okay? Because you may be watching this video and you may feel uncomfortable with the vibe. The idea is that nothing is personal. We're just shooting people's ideas down so that, so that you can make better and informed decisions. I'll tell you a couple of my thoughts, all right, from, and I spent a few years, all right, working on projects, working on businesses and all that, consulting for people, helping people build market campaigns. So I'll tell you some of my, some of my thoughts, okay? The thoughts are not foolproof, but my thoughts are grounded in reality. And it's not, um, it's not an optimistic picture. It's a pessimistic picture about business, but you have to pay attention to it, particularly from those of us who are involved in it. So the first thing is this. There's need for support system if you're going to branch out into anything. Sure. Okay. And his story is, is so his story is crucial because he had the support system of family. They will tell you most times, particularly if you are if you're a married man and you want to start a business, they will tell you most times. Veteran businessmen, and I have met quite a few. I have spoken quite a few. I have a few as mentors. They will tell you that when you start out in the business and you're a married man, you have to sit down and talk to your wife and explain to your wife how difficult things will be. Sure. And do not paint a rosy picture. Tell your wife it will take you 10 years. If it comes early, it's going to take you a year. If you succeed in a year or two years, it's good for you. But if you don't succeed in the first 10 years, eh, you'd have to manage expectations because most people think that when they're going to start a business, they will blow up. Most businesses fail within the first 10 years. It's said about 99% of businesses shut down within the first 10 years as a result of several host of issues. So that's one thing. You need support system. You need people that can feed you. If you are a single man and you're not yet married, it's a great time for you to, to, try, to try your hands on it. But you need people who can feed you. You need, people where, you need a place where you can live. Because if you don't have those things, after a while, you stop running the business. You start focusing on how do I get food to eat? How do I get a place to stay? Support systems are important. You need to study the industry. There's something they say in the world of banking that it is when the 
It is when the tide goes out that you know who has not been swimming without their boxers. Do you understand? Yes. If you are, if you are swimming in the river, for those people who grew up in river areas, there are times in which the river level will rise and it will come down. If everybody jumps into the river in the evening, in the afternoon rather, by the time the river level drops down, and the person who is swimming naked is when the water <laughs> stuff goes down. You will know. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that there are some industries that the reason why people are succeeding in those industries is not because of their skill. It's because the industry is booming. Yes. When the river is rising up, it covers everybody's nakedness. When the water goes out there, the only people who would not be ashamed are those people who, who have their box and everything on. And so it applies to business. So in fact, more than doing a market analysis, analyzing the business industry you are entering into matters greatly. All right? There are some industries that you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to be extremely skilled and all that once you enter into it. For example, in most African countries, if you're a politician, no matter how, no matter how fantastic or competent or incompetent you are as a politician, in most African countries, people you who are make. politicians succeed. You get so those are some of the things, and 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 that's where his story is particularly telling, because right now there is a craze about coding, robotics, and STEM fields, and so lots of people across the world are throwing money into it. Parents are willing to train their children. A lot of parents don't even know exactly what the training is about, but they just said that Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, all these guys are billionaires, and it's coding that took them there, and they will enter there. So if you want to enter the industry, you have to be sure that you have to look at the long term of the overall industry, not just the market itself. Okay, so that's um, that's another thing. If you are running brick and mortar businesses, people will tell you that the rules of retail brick and mortar businesses is what? Location, location, location. If you are running a bakery, the location of your bakery matters. And that's the reason why you find out that a lot of people place bakeries there inside filling stations that are busy. Or people place bakery inside grocery stores yes. where you have food traffic. If you are running a, a dry cleaning business, Usually, the dry cleaning business wants, you want the dry cleaning business to be at the part of the road where people are leaving their houses. So that when they are driving out in the morning, they take their dirty clothes, they branch out, branch into the dry cleaning business, drop it, and they drive off. If you are running a grocery store, you want your grocery store to be close to where people are coming home. And that's why if you look at where most supermarkets and restaurants are located, particularly in most towns, eh, it's usually in the places where people are coming back. Sure. If you look at, for example, Iko, this is a good example. You don't have too many restaurants eh, on the side of Ikorodu, where people are driving out. The market eh, on the side where people are coming out is, is bigger and fuller than when people are going out because people are not going to buy pepe on their way to work. Some people do anyway, but so those are things that location matters. And he mentioned something the last time you were here, which I respect for. He said that, honestly, that if you are in, if, and he gave an example that when he was working in Ikorodu or teaching in Ikorodu, the amount of money that people were paying in Ikorodu, can you recall, was it, was, was less compared to the amount of money that people would pay in other eyebrow areas of Lagos, like um, Lekki. Lekki and Victoria Island. Mm -hmm. So that matters a lot. It's also the reason why if you look at it, most of the time, people establish shopping malls around federal secretariats or state secretariats. There's a reason why in Lagos State, beside the Lagos State um, Secretariat in Laosa, you have a large city mall. Because civil servants who work there, once they collect their salary, they can walk into the shopping mall to go and buy. Strategic. People have set up similar shopping malls in other locations that have been forced to shut down because you didn't have where people that traction is. So you have to keep that back in mind. Dave mentioned the issue of learning the trade. All right. There's one thing people talk about um, Elon Musk and he said that the guy is building rockets, is this, is that. But if you sit down and go and read his bio, he, there's a biography he wrote. Or if you watch a couple of his videos, the guy would tell you that before he started building a rocket ship company, he spent six months to one year studying. He bought almost all the books available on propulsion technology. He bought almost all the books available eh, on building space rocket engines. He sat down and he digested it for six months. He also had the luxury of having a lot of money from the sale of a previous company. So knowledge matters a lot of times because for most industries, all of us are knowledge workers. If, you, if each time your, pro, your business runs into a problem, you have to pay people to solve the problem in that business, you're going to run them because you keep paying specialists and paying professionals over and over again. And so it's important. Some people say they don't want to work for anybody. And I would say this, that's a lot of crap. All right? Because in the world of business, you need introductions. Yes. I would tell you this. I have gotten to places, I have gotten things done on the basis of introductions. I've had people who have paid for flight tickets. I've had people who have paid for me to be at meetings because of introductions. And a lot of times you will not meet people unless you are working for someone else. Yes. For example, on this podcast, we're doing this podcast in the studio, but over the course of the next one year, there are lots of people who are going to be interviewing and debating. Captains of industry, 
and we cannot meet. We can't bring some of them here. So we are going to drive down to go and interview them because the world of business largely runs on relationships. Sure. For example, if you want to set up a mining company, you are going to need licenses. You need relationships to get those licenses. All right. If you set up a mining company, you are going to need security. In Nigeria, you are not allowed to buy guns here to protect yourself. You will need people in the armed forces or retired military personnel that you can talk to who can get you contracts with either paramilitary organizations or private military contractors to safeguard your mining sites. Most businesses have collapsed because in the process of where they were mining, eh, hostile people came and what, they stole all their equipment and they killed staff and workers. So you need relationships. And some of those relationships are not in the world of business. They're in the world of, in the world of politics, in the world of finance and all that. And working for other people helps you. I have spent years working for people. I have spent, I have spent years serving people and, and it's not, and I won't tell you that without going into much more detail, you have to serve somebody at some point. You need that knowledge if you want to be a well-rounded business person. Um, on the part of incubation time, businesses, we've said earlier, will take a lot of time. He mentioned that his business since 2016. And I, and I salute you, sir, that you've been able to run a business and that right now you are, you are able to foot your bills and not just foot your bills, save and keep going, and more power to you. And I think that Thank it's you. important that um, it's important that you reflect on the amount of time it has taken you, and so that when you are coaching people, you can tell them honestly the amount of time it will take them, because people are going to go into the world of entrepreneurship and they will be they will be disappointed. Sure. It's not the first, second, or third try attempt. A lot of people would fail, fail, fail. You will gather skills, and then you get to a point in which you would prepare yourself that it doesn't matter if we fail for the next five, 10 years, we are ready to go down this course. And so in, businesses have incubation periods, you need to keep that at the back of your mind. Um, we spoke about investment capital. He mentioned, Mr. You need to, there's a statement that we say during the, in, in, in our organization. And one of the things we say is this, is that you should be afraid of old men in an industry where people die young. If you're in an industry where, if, you, if you're in an industry where people die, if young men die early, then if you meet an old man in that industry, you have to be afraid of him because that man he knows how not to die. He mentioned something about, he's worked in the world of investment in banking. He's worked for 12 years. He wanted to start a real estate company. He understood the pitfalls. Okay, if you really want to know how businesses collapse, you need to be there when banks are taking back, are taking back bad loans and see the way in which, most of us have experienced it. People have called you, telling you that you should tell so and so person that you do not trust to come and pay back his loan. That's how dirty the world of, and so as much as possible, you need to spend time with bankers, build relationships with people in the world of banking, and so that they can, because a lot of them will have information on the specific industry you want to do. They will understand the failure rates. Mr. Solomon is a microfinance banker. He has seen a lot. And one of the things we would advise that, particularly for those of you watching, you can reach out to him via social media handle and all that if you have mentorship, particularly talking to people so that you can see the failure rate in the industry you want to go. Then finally about marriage and family. This journey, it's, most of this time, it takes a, most businesses take a long time to go. And it's very, very important that the person you select to be your marital partner, you carry the person along. Much more than that, it's also, it's also important for you to set the right expectations for the person. We are having this conversation because most of you who are watching this, you are in that state in, stage in which you are starting your career and you are starting your families. All right? You cannot promise them that you are going to change their lives. They have to understand it's going to be a long journey. So that's a, a summary of all the conversations we've had today. It's been an interesting debate. Um, thank you very much for joining us. I hope that, I hope we learned at least, I learned something. Some truths were brought to life. And we are grateful for everybody. We are grateful to Can you, Can I sir. say something, sir? You want to defend yourself? No, I'm not defending. Okay. It's just more like an encouragement to okay. the younger ones or for anyone that wants to go into entrepreneurship. The truth about it is... Um, you can decide to work for someone and still become the billionaire or millionaire based on what Dr. Lars actually said. But if you want to go into entrepreneurship, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have the mind. Your mind should be fully prepared for the worst. You understand? Secondly, go for it. Even if you would fail, still go for it. You understand? Sometimes the particular thing you want to achieve in life the particular thing you want to achieve in life, the truth about it is you might not get it that moment. I won't lie to you. My end point, sir, is to go into oil and gas. But I don't have the funds now. It is something that will lead to something to something. 
you understand. So push let's let's do this after let's do this way. Way. We'll talk let's about this oil and gas. All right. Yeah. And maybe someday we'll look back and you guys will see those kind of oil and gas deals started from mm-hmm. here. And so he has told you, you have listened to his story, write the video up. You have his Instagram handle. If there's any of you in the oil and gas industry, you want to support a young budding entrepreneur. You've heard about his story, you've heard about his struggles, you've heard about the way he has pulled himself up. If you want to provide support for anybody on the show that you've heard there, you can reach out to them. Thank you very much for joining the show. We have to close out. Thank you very much for being here. So,